The Japanese government says the lifespan of nuclear plants could be extended by up to 20 years beyond the currently proposed 40-year limit. So, oh, you fucker! Government leaders say extensions would be granted only once. Some experts have criticized the plan as having no scientific basis. Nuclear crisis minister Goshi Hosono said earlier this month that plants should have a lifespan of 40 years. He made the proposal as part of a safety regulations review following the disaster at Fukushima Daiichi. Chief Cabinet Secretary Osamu Fujimura says there has been no basic change in the government's policy. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> The government is considering the new plan only if plants fulfill strict safety regulations. And the extension would be one time only and limited to a maximum of 20 years. You got a lot of nerve trying to sell that junk away. A professor of nuclear engineering at Kyushu University questions the extension plan. Kazuhiko Kudo says he doesn't understand why the limit was set at 40 years in the first place. Kudo says officials need to first address the challenges of operating aging reactors. But members of the government task force say the extension plan is in line with global standards. They say the plan would be subject to strict safety rules. What's the matter? Taste it. Taste it. Why? There's nothing wrong with it. Local municipalities hosting nuclear plants have criticized the government for flip-flopping on its policy. The government should decide its policy based on information from experts. I'm concerned that this kind of flip-flopping will make people nervous. What are you trying to do, poison me? No, but he is... Izumida also asserted that the government should give valid reasons for the extension. Oh, so you're poisoning people, huh? Japan's nuclear agency has endorsed the results of safety tests on two nuclear reactors in Fukui Prefecture. It's the first time the government has assessed such tests. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency met on Wednesday to study the results of computer-simulated stress tests on reactors at the OE nuclear plant on the Sea of Japan coast. Opponents of nuclear power staged a protest against the agency's decision to bar observers from the meeting. After three hours, the agency convened the meeting in a different venue. Two of the eight agency panel members stayed away, saying it's inappropriate to exclude observers. Industry Minister Yukio Edano said the ministry will post a video of the meeting on its website as soon as possible. The agency plans to give its final assessment of the two reactors after an inspection by International Atomic Energy Agency officials later this month. Local governments must approve any resumption of stalled reactors. Fukui Prefecture says the stress tests are not enough to approve a restart. Local officials want the government to introduce new safety measures, drawing on the lessons of the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Hey, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. No, why not? Let them have it. Right. Iran says it will accept IAEA inspectors later this month. The country has been facing mounting pressure over its nuclear program. Iran's envoy to the IAEA, Ali Asghar Solataniyeh, told NHK that the inspectors will visit Tehran on the 29th and stay for three days. He said the visit will be for discussions, not inspections. The IEA reported in November that Iran had tested an advanced explosive device that simulated a nuclear weapon. Iran confirmed earlier this month that uranium is being refined at an underground plant near the city of Qom. But Solitanier said Iran will not permit access to the nuclear facility this time. He said it was unnecessary as the IEA has been inspecting the plant regularly. Diplomats from the U.S., Japan and South Korea say the path is open for North Korea to return to talks on its nuclear program. They've agreed to keep pushing the new regime toward uh, denuclearization. Foreign ministers from the three countries will meet as soon as possible to discuss the changing dynamic on the Korean peninsula. 
U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Kirk Campbell hosted representatives of Japan and South Korea at a meeting in Washington. It was the first such gathering of representatives of the three countries since the death of Kim Jong-il. We agreed that it's extremely important to make progress in inter-Korean relations and resolve the issue of abductions by North Korea. Sugiyama said the countries would push for further cooperation from China. The North's closest ally, Chinese leaders have been cautious about sharing information on North Korea. The Japanese government has been accused of betraying its people by informing the American military about the spread of radiation from Fukushima more than a week before it told the Japanese public. The mayor of a Japanese community abandoned because of its proximity to the Fukushima nuclear plant has told AM the government's actions were akin to murder. An official from Japan's science ministry, which was in charge of mapping the spread of radiation, has acknowledged to AM that perhaps the public should have been told about the dangers at the same time the US military was informed. North Asia correspondent Mark Willisey reports from Tokyo. In the hours after the meltdowns at Fukushima, the unseen plumes of radiation began to roll over the Japanese landscape. Just a few kilometres from the oozing remains of the nuclear plant, the people of Namie village gathered to evacuate. With no information coming from Tokyo, the mayor, Tomotsu Baba, decided to lead the people of his community further north, away from the plant. He didn't know it at the time, but that was the very direction the plumes of radiation were also blowing. Because we had no information, we were unwittingly evacuating to an area where the radiation level was high, so I'm very worried about the people's health, Mayor Baba tells AM. I feel pain in my heart, but also rage over the poor actions of the government, he says. While the people of Namie and the Japanese public as a whole weren't getting any clear idea from their government about the possible spread of radiation, the Americans were. Just three days after the tsunami crushed the Fukushima nuclear plant, Japan's science ministry handed over computer predictions about the radiation dispersal to the U.S. military. Itaru Watanabe from the science ministry says the government did this to secure U.S. support in dealing with the nuclear crisis. But he admits that maybe that same data should have been shared with the public too. According to the government panel investigating the disaster, the information about the potential spread of radiation could have been given to the public. The science ministry should have told the nuclear disaster task force to pass on the data to the people. But we didn't think of that. We acknowledge that now. The now homeless mayor of Namie village, Tomotsu Baba, accuses the Japanese authorities of abandoning his village by withholding information and leaving his community at the mercy of unseen radiation. It's not nice language, but I still think it was an act of murder, says the mayor. What were they thinking when it came to the people's dignity and lives? I doubt they even thought about our existence, he says. It's true Japan's science ministry struggled to glean accurate information about the amount of radiation spewing from the Fukushima plant, with some data about its spread proving wide of the mark. But the ministry's Itaru Watanabe acknowledges whatever data was available should have been passed on to the public. We acknowledge the criticism that if the data was publicly known, that people could have avoided areas of high contamination. For the 20,000 people of Namie, that probably doesn't mean much. They've lost their homes, and many fear for the health of their children. This is Mark Willisey in Tokyo for AM. Picture of the cat, right? And people were like, oh my God, let's go get it. Now they had to add little pet personals to the ad. Have you seen these? Same picture of a cat in a cage, but right next to it it says, Hi, my name's Fluffy. I'm a single female tabby. And, I'm, and I like children, and I like to be petted, so come and get me. Like right next to it, they got another picture of a cat in a cage. It says, Hi, my name's Mr. Bubbles. I'm a single male Persian, and I like a big backyard, and I like my own kitty litter box. And I actually like a quiet living room, if I haven't mentioned that already. And I like sunshine. Really, Mr. Bubbles? I like those things too, but I'm not a used cat in animal prison right now. <laughs> I don't know if you should be making demands at this point in your life. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I'm a used cat in a shelter, my ad's gonna sound more like, 
hey, my name's whatever the f you want to be. I'll find my own food. You can feed me NyQuil and duct tape a hockey stick to me. Call me Swiffer. I don't care. I don't care at all. You can blow pot smoke in my face all day. I'm not leaving. Just get me the hell out of here. That's all I'm asking for right now. Baby steps, right? They're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me. I haven't seen Mr. Bubbles in days. Somebody lower my price. <laughs>